Okay, in this particular video we're being asked to solve these simultaneous equations. Um, x squared plus y squared equals 41 and y equals 2x minus 3. So my proposal is what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to solve them and then I'm going to draw you a sketch of what, what is actually going on here. Okay, so the first thing is, is that rather than writing y, I'm going to use this value of y, which is 2x minus 3. So I can write my equation as x squared plus 2x minus 3 squared equals 41. And that means then that I've got x as the unknown and I can solve for x and then once I've got my value of x I can plug that in to get my value of y into this particular equation here. Okay, so this particular method is the method of substitution. All right, so let's just expand that and see where we end up. So I've got x squared plus and it's going to be 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3 equals 41. OK, so then it's a case of I can um, multiply out those brackets. And I'm going to get x squared plus 2x times 2x is 4x squared. And I've got 2x times minus 3 is going to be minus 6x. And then I've got minus 6x again, so that's going to be minus 12x. And then I've got plus 9. If you're not sure how I've done that expansion, please do have a look at some of the other videos within the playlist and that will uh, within the channel and that will help you a little bit. OK, so that equals 41. Now what I'm going to do is gather up my like terms. So I'm going to bring the x squared terms together. I'm going to get 5x squared. I've got minus 12x and then I've got plus 9 and I'm going to make this equal to 0. So I'm going to bring my 41 over to the left hand side and I'm going to get minus 32 equals 0. The reason I've made it equal to 0 is because I do need then to be able to solve this equation. As I'm sure you appreciate at the moment it's in a quadratic form. Uh, now there are a couple of ways in which we can do that. The first one I guess most people would use is the quadratic formula or you might try trial and error first and then appreciate that perhaps you do need the uh, quadratic formula. I'm actually going to use a slightly different method because I've got a feeling that I can do this without using the formula. So I'm going to do 5 times minus 32 and that's going to give me, so 5 times minus 32 is going to give me minus 160. And what I'm looking for is two numbers that when I multiply them together make minus 160 and when I add them together make minus 12. Now those two numbers are going to be plus 8 and minus 20 because 8 times minus 20 is 100 and, minus 160 and 8 plus minus 20 is going to be minus 12. So it allows me then to actually write this equation as 5x squared minus 20x plus 8x minus 32. Now that's no different because minus 20x plus 8x is going to give you minus 12x. But the technique here then is I can factorise the first two terms and the second two terms. And providing I've got a common factor to both of them, I can then write it as two bracketed terms multiplied together. OK, hopefully that's not, not too confusing when you actually see it. But if I look at the first two terms, I can factorise those for 5x and I get x minus 4. OK. The second two terms, I can multiply, I can factorise those for 8 plus 8. And guess what? I get x minus 4 again. OK, so I've got now two common terms, x minus 4 and x minus 4. So I can actually write this as 5x plus 8 multiplied by x minus 4. And that's my factorisation. OK, now... It then means I can use this information to figure out my values of x, which are going to be x equals 4, which comes from this one here, and 
x equals minus 8 over 5, which comes from this one over here, okay? Now, just because it's going to be a little bit simpler for me, I'm going to write that minus 8 over 5 as minus 1.6. It's just the, the decimal equivalent. OK, so hopefully um, when you get to this point, you're OK with that being x minus 4 equals 0. So therefore, x must equal 4 and 5x plus 8 equals 0. So therefore, x must equal minus 8 over 5 which is the same as say minus 1.6. And then really it's just a case of plugging those values of x back into one of the equations. And the most obvious one is actually this one here. So what we're gonna say is that for each of those values, I know that x is four. So therefore for the value of y, I can use two x minus three. So that's gonna be y equals 2 times 4 minus 3, so in this particular case, y equals 5, so x equals 4 and y equals 5 for my first two values. Okay, second two values, I'm going to use exactly the same. I'm going to say, well, I've got y equals 2x minus 3, and I'm going to plug this value of x in. So I'm going to say that y equals 2 times minus 1.6 minus 3, which is going to be minus 3.2 minus 3, which is going to give me uh, minus 6.2. So now y equals minus 6.2 when x equals minus 1.6. And that actually will answer the question. But before I finish, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on here. You might have spotted that you've got a y squared term as well as an x squared term. So what that means is, is this actually the equation for a circle? OK, now the equation for a circle is something along the line or is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So r is the radius, okay? So hopefully you can see that just at the very bottom there. So if the equation of x squared plus y squared equals 41, what we're saying is, is that this value is, or the value of r is root 41, which is really, really close to either 6 or 7, okay? So 6 would be 36 and 7 would be 49. So what we've got is a circle here with a radius of 6.5, very roughly 6.5, okay? And then we've got a straight line, y equals 2x minus 3, that goes through this circle. And it actually intersects at two, intercepts the circle at two points, one of which is 4, 5, which is sort of about there. So this is 4, 5, OK? And then the other of which is down there. So that's going to be minus 1.6, minus 6.2. So actually very close to the edge of the circle here, the full radius. So we've got then a straight line that goes through like that. And this point here actually is the y-intercept of minus 3, if you look at the actual equation. OK, so in a roundabout way, that's actually how to do it. Um, you've got this is the sketch of what's going on. The values of x equals 4 and y equals 5 and the values of x equals minus 1.6, y equals minus 6.2 for this particular one. But it is quite a tricky uh, simultaneous equation. You could use, if you wanted to, the quadratic formula and hopefully you would also get the same result. I hope that's been useful to you. Please do uh, add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. I'll always come back to you and I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.